The Disappearance of Dorothy Arnold, One of New York's Greatest Mysteries. Dorothy Arnold, a wealthy heiress known for her beauty, vanished while out shopping on Fifth Avenue. Despite an extensive and costly search, the investigation failed to produce any definitive leads, making it one of the most perplexing cases in the country's history. To this day, amateur sleuths continue to investigate the case with renewed vigor. Born in Manhattan in 1885, Dorothy Harriet Camille Arnold was one of four children of Mary and Frances Arnold. Mary hailed from Canada, while Frances was originally from England and graduated from Harvard University. He soon amassed great wealth, having become a partner in a company that imported perfumes. As members of America's upper echelon, the Arnolds mingled with some of New York's wealthiest men, including the Rockefellers. Their social status was so high that the family was even featured in the exclusive Social Register, a publication that listed the country's most prominent families. After receiving an outstanding education at the prestigious Welton School for Girls, the young girl exhibited a natural talent for literature and languages. She subsequently enrolled at Bryn Mawr College in Pennsylvania, where she graduated with honors in 1905, setting her sights on a career as a writer. Dorothy was known for her demure and restrained demeanor, with her calm countenance indicating a preference for modesty over frivolity. Upon returning to her parents' home at 108 East 79th Street, Dorothy set out to write her story. After a couple of months, she completed it and began searching for a magazine to publish it, but was met with rejection at every turn. Despite her family's wealth and influence, Dorothy refused to rely on them to further her writing career, choosing instead to rely on her own abilities. However, her talent was dismissed by all, including her own family, who viewed her writing as a frivolous and futile pursuit. Although discouraged, Dorothy continued to write while also immersing herself in social activities, such as dining with friends, exploring restaurants and stores, and entertaining suitors. By 1910, Dorothy had several additional stories completed and was sending them out to publishers and magazines with renewed enthusiasm. She even went so far as to rent a mailbox to ensure that all correspondence regarding her writing would come directly to her without her family's knowledge. In November of that year, she completed her short story, Poinsettia and the Flame, which she considered her best work to date. Despite her confidence in the story, however, it too was rejected by all the publishers to whom she submitted it. Frustrated by the rejection of her work, Dorothy became despondent and asked her father to rent her an apartment in Greenwich Village so that she could write in solitude. Although Frances Arnold did not discourage his daughter from pursuing her writing, he believed that she had no talent for it and had little interest in allowing Dorothy to leave the family home unless it was to get married. He advised her that a good writer can write anywhere and viewed her struggles as a passing phase that she would eventually overcome. The Day of Disappearance After a month of attempting to move out of her parents' home, Dorothy's spirits were low as she had been unsuccessful in her efforts. On December 12, 1910, in an attempt to lift her mood, Dorothy set out for a shopping trip on Fifth Avenue. Dorothy's purpose for the shopping trip was to purchase a new evening gown for her sister's upcoming debutante ball, an event that marked a girl's entry into high society and eligibility for marriage. A lover of fine clothing and financially capable of indulging in her passion, Dorothy dressed elegantly for the occasion. She wore a stylish tailored jacket, a blue twill coat, and a form-fitting pencil skirt that fell just above her ankles. Her accessories included a large fur clutch and a satin handbag, while a velvet hat adorned with two living roses completed her ensemble. Despite the snow and rain making for a less than ideal day for walking, Dorothy was spotted purchasing chocolates at the Park and Tilford Candy Store around noon on December 12. Undeterred by the inclement weather and treacherous sidewalks, she continued her journey for another hour, walking a distance of approximately 20 blocks, nearly 3 kilometers, before arriving at Brentano's bookstore. 
There, she purchased a collection of humorous short stories by Emily Calvin Blake titled Sketches of an Engaged Girl. According to store clerks, Dorothy appeared to be in good spirits and showed no signs of worry or concern during either of her stops. After leaving the bookstore, Dorothy bumped into her friend Gladys King. The two caught up, discussing the upcoming debutante ball. According to King, Dorothy was her usual polite and jovial self. Although Dorothy wanted to talk more, Gladys had to leave to meet her mother for lunch at the Waldorf Astoria. As they parted ways, Dorothy suggested that Gladys take a stroll through Central Park, but Gladys had other plans. Dorothy then headed down 27th Street at around 2 p.m., waving goodbye to her friend. No one else afflawed the 25-year-old after that encounter. It is noteworthy that when Dorothy Arnold left her home, she informed her mother that she was going to buy a dress. However, she was not spotted in any of the stores or ateliers where one would expect her to purchase such an item. The beginning of the search. That evening, Dorothy did not show up for dinner, which was unusual. Concerned, her family started calling her friends, asking if they had seen her that day. Mary and Frances Arnold did not want rumors of their daughter's disappearance to circulate, so they later informed Dorothy's friends that she had returned home. The following day, when Dorothy did not return home, her family became convinced that she was missing and decided to hire private investigators from the Pinkerton Detective Agency. The detectives arrived on the scene promptly and began their investigation by examining Dorothy's room. Upon inspection, everything seemed to be in order. Her clothes were neatly hanging in the closet, except for the one she wore on the day of her disappearance. However, upon opening the desk drawer, the detectives found a stack of personal letters that appeared to be simple friendly correspondence, some of which had foreign postmarks. Additionally, two folders containing research material for her new story, Lotus Leaves, were found on her desk, which contained information about transatlantic travels. Upon examining the fireplace, the detectives discovered a small heap of charred papers. It was likely that this was the remains of the manuscript for Poinsettia and the Flame, which was missing and couldn't be found elsewhere. The detectives conducted an extensive search, scurrying through all the family's acquaintances, hospitals, morgues, and even prisons, but they failed to find any leads on Dorothy's whereabouts. After six weeks of investigation, they suggested that the family should involve the police in the matter. Press Conference Despite a circular about Dorothy's disappearance being sent to the police in mid-December, law enforcement did not initiate a search for her until January 24, 1911, as proper protocol had to be followed in those days before beginning a search. The public only learned about Dorothy's disappearance during a press conference held by Francis Arnold in his office on January 25. The case quickly garnered widespread interest, with people across America and even around the world wondering what had happened to her and where she might be. Dorothy's image was printed in numerous newspapers and publications. She disappeared from one of the busiest streets on earth in the middle of a sunny day in front of hundreds of men and women strolling through New York City at the time. One newspaper would write about Dorothy Arnold. Although the family involved the police, Dorothy's father was not sure she was alive, saying at a press conference, I firmly believe my daughter was murdered, but I will spend as much money as it takes to avenge her death. Invited reporters began asking questions about Dorothy's suitors, and this infuriated Frances. It's not true that I objected to her dating men and chased away her chosen ones, he thundered. I would have been glad to see her socializing with young men, especially those of intelligence and position. I do not approve of young men who do nothing. Dorothy's secret. Men who do nothing. The intriguing statement prompted journalists to investigate Dorothy's personal life, and they soon uncovered the man Mr. Arnold was probably referring to. The man in question was George Griscom, Jr., a 42-year-old with sideburns, balding, and a bit plump, who resided with his elderly parents in Pittsburgh. 
As Francis had mentioned, George never had a job and relied entirely on his wealthy parents for support. According to a newspaper, his doting mother still purchased all his shirts and ties. However, Junior's connection to Dorothy's disappearance could not be ignored. Journalists uncovered that the girl had first met Griscom while studying at Bryn Mawr, but they didn't start dating until a year ago. Their relationship had become serious, and they were planning to announce their engagement soon. The revelation helped make sense of Dorothy's behavior, including her decision to move to Greenwich Village and rent a private mailbox. She likely used it to communicate with Griscom discreetly, as she knew her father would disapprove of their relationship. Despite the suspicion around Junior, the police couldn't arrest him for Dorothy's disappearance, as he had a solid alibi. Dozens of witnesses confirmed that he had been in Italy during the time she went missing. Versions of what happened, for information that could solve the mystery of Dorothy's disappearance, the Arnolds offered a reward of $5,000 almost $150,000 in today's money. However, this reward remained without its recipient. No one knows exactly what happened to the socialite, but there are several theories about it. I will try to consider the most likely ones. Suicide. Dorothy had aspirations of becoming a writer, but the magazines she submitted her work to repeatedly rejected her stories. The discovery of burnt manuscripts in her fireplace potentially including her best work, may suggest that she was experiencing a deep sense of discouragement. Moreover, her boyfriend, George Griscom Jr., believed that the theory of Dorothy's suicide due to her literary failures was the most reasonable explanation for her disappearance. Come back. McClure's magazine turned me down. Failure haunts me. All I see ahead are endless disappointments in the path of my life was the note she sent to Junior in Italy. If Dorothy was so passionate about pursuing a writing career, why didn't she use her inheritance money as a starting point? Moreover, she could have explored other avenues to succeed, given that she was only 25 years old and had her whole life ahead of her. Kidnapping and Murder during the search for Dorothy, the Arnolds received two ransom notes claiming that their daughter had been kidnapped and demanding $5,000 for her safe return. However, both letters were later found to be fake. Five years after Dorothy went missing, a man named Edward Glenorris, who was serving time in a Rhode Island prison, made a statement claiming that he was paid $250 to dispose of Dorothy's body around the time of her disappearance. Edward Glenorris, who was in prison in Rhode Island, claimed that he was paid $250 to dispose of a woman's body, which occurred around the same time as Dorothy's disappearance. According to Glenorris, a man named Little Louie, who resembled George Griscom Jr., had hired him and gave him the body of a woman in Weehawken, New Jersey. Louie told him that they had kidnapped her for ransom but had accidentally killed her, Although Louis did not reveal the woman's identity, Glenorris noticed a signet ring on her finger, which matched the description of the one that Dorothy was wearing when she went missing. Glenorris recanted his statement when the police became involved and denied any knowledge of Dorothy. Despite this, law enforcement searched multiple locations in Weehawken in an attempt to locate her remains, but they were unsuccessful. Unsuccessful surgery in April 1916, a new theory emerged that Dorothy had undergone an abortion, which had gone wrong, resulting in her death. Police searched an illegal clinic in Bellevue, Pennsylvania, run by Dr. Meredith and Mr. Lutz, whose office was in the same building, claimed that Meredith had told him about Dorothy's visit. According to Lutz, Dorothy had gone to the clinic seeking an abortion, but died during the procedure. Lutz speculated that Meredith had cremated her body in one of the ovens in the basement. However, the police had no concrete evidence to support this theory, as Meredith kept no records, and any possible traces would have long been gone over the years. Robbery When Dorothy disappeared, she had around $30 in cash with her, which would be approximately $800 today. 
It is conceivable that she could have been robbed and killed for this money, especially considering that she was walking alone in Central Park during the winter. This was the theory that Dorothy's father considered most probable. He even asked for the lake in Central Park to be drained, but it was impossible since the reservoir was covered with ice in December, the time of her disappearance, and it was unlikely that Dorothy could have been there. Francis, Dorothy Arnold's father, always believed that his daughter was dead from the very beginning. He even shared publicly that he received letters that convinced him of his theory and that he had two clues that he reported to Mr. Whitman, the district attorney. However, he promised not to disclose these clues. According to Francis, he had every reason to believe that Dorothy was abducted on Fifth Avenue and then murdered. Regrettably, the specific nature of these clues has not been disclosed in any available sources, and neither law enforcement nor the media have made any mention of them. It is possible that the clues Francis received were postcards sent by criminals pretending to be Dorothy, using a sample of her handwriting published in the newspaper. There was also a claim from a jeweler in California that Dorothy had purchased an engagement ring, but this was never verified. However, about three months after her disappearance, the NYPD concluded that Dorothy was dead and closed the investigation. Deputy Police Commissioner William Flynn stated that after 75 days of searching, no substantial clues had been found to examine in relation to the missing girl. He further added that there was no evidence suggesting that a crime had been committed, and the case was being treated as a missing person case with nothing more to it. Conclusions? So, what can we make of all this? It appears logical that Dorothy may have been robbed for her clothes and money, but it's hard to imagine why anyone would go so far as to kill her. While this theory seems more plausible than others, it raises the question of where her body could have been hidden, especially given that this occurred in broad daylight in the middle of a bustling city. Dorothy's secret boyfriend, George Griscom Jr., was in Italy at the time of her disappearance, and there is no evidence to suggest that he had anything to do with it. In fact, he loved her and they had plans to get married. Those who had seen and spoken to Dorothy in the days leading up to her disappearance noted that she did not appear to be suicidal and was actively making plans for the future. In the subsequent years, numerous women who resembled Dorothy or shared her name were discovered, and individuals frequently reported to police stations claiming to have found the missing woman. However, none of these leads resulted in locating the real Dorothy Arnold. Tragically, Frances Arnold passed away in July 1922, and his wife, Mary, followed him a few years later in 1928. Neither of them had the opportunity to uncover the truth about their daughter's disappearance. Before their deaths, both of Dorothy Arnold's parents wrote her out of their wills, expressing concerns about imposters. We have not made any provisions for our beloved daughter, Dorothy H.C. Arnold, because we believe she is deceased, and we fear that those who impersonate her may illegitimately enrich themselves. It is worth noting that the Arnolds spared no expense in their efforts to locate their missing daughter, spending nearly $100,000 at the time, which would be equivalent to around $3 million in today's currency. Despite the tireless efforts of her family, the police, and countless others to uncover what happened to Dorothy, her disappearance remains one of the most perplexing and enduring mysteries in the history of New York City.